viewers. I was just on Facebook, one of the pages, talking about how to make profit on sheep. Well, the nice thing about sheep compared to cattle is that sheep have a five month gestation period. I think cattle have a nine or ten month gestation period. Of sheep, pigs, and cattle sold mostly at most stockyards. Sheep have the most, I wouldn't say concrete because it does fluctuate a little bit, but it fluctuates a lot less than cattle and pigs. Namely because, well, only about 30-40% of the sheep market is actually raised here in the United States. Most of it either comes from Europe, Australia, New Zealand is a big contributor, and yeah, the sheep market needs to grow. The problem with us in the United States is the big hoo-ha, I guess, about sheep is that most guys in farming don't look at sheep as being profitable. They look at it as a backyard farm. Yeah, I have a few livestock kind of thing, and they just end up being sheep. Well, you can make some big money off sheep. You can fit more on per acre than cattle because they have a lighter impact on land. You can put them in marshier land than cattle because of that exact fact. They don't tear up the ground like cattle do. Or pigs for that matter. And pigs, they can literally fluctuate 40 cents per pound in a four to six month span. You can go from making 28 cents a pound and losing money with hand over fist to maybe making buy at 70, 75 cents a pound sold commercially. That's why the old style guys that used to raise pigs commercially have all gone to the wayside. Yeah, Mittens, what's up? Gotta have a barn cat. I have three or four of them. He's the inside outside cat though, my big Tom. So anyways, cattle, we'll get back to cattle and sheep. I like beef, don't get me wrong. I like my porterhouses. I like my ribeyes, all that. But I also like my leg of lamb and my lamb chops. And my mutton jerky. And let's talk about money with sheep though. Versus cattle. Sheep, you can buy use as cheap as 100, 150 bucks and all the way to the sky blows up money wise. I'm phasing out of club lambs going full commercial namely because there's yeah the club lambs sell for high money but you got a lot of expenses in it the highest i've seen or even heard of being ram for sale on the club side was a half share of $125,000 the highest commercial ram i've ever heard for sale in the united states was about 1100 to 1500 bucks there's a huge difference there and I like feeding animals that grow. Animals that grow are profitable. And every animal is profitable. That has to be here. If they're not profitable, they're gone. Hey, big mama. Let me explain that. And this takes some years to realize. If you're willing to, there's a market for everything. We used to take the wool and just use them for bedding for raised garden beds. The black face is a little coarser wool than like say a Dorset or Murano, what have you, or Shetland, the small useless sheep. So it's more for like rugs and like comforter bed, uh, bedding, where you make a comforter and you put the felting inside of it from the wool. And we'll turn the wool into felting and fit, fit in there. Your finer walls like your Murano and Cordell's and stuff like that. You can make scarves and hats and what have you, baby clothes. 
So there is always a market for whatever type of wool you have. There's always somebody out there that will spend more than what the commercial side of it will pay you. Now, this might offend a few people, and but it is an avenue of uh, revenue, per se. I have found a market where the bad side of having, say, a late-term abortion, a stillborn, you know, a day, couple day old lamb that didn't quite make it, whatever, a mummified lamb where a lamb was born dead with no mouth or no anus. I mean, it happens. I haven't had mummy, mummified lamb. Years ago, we had a dead and stillborn lamb, but not in the last few years we haven't. Um, I have found a market for those lambs. They sell like hotcakes, unbelievably to me, I found out. To the uh, taxidermy side, people like to stuff the lamb and then put it in like a coyote mouth or a cougar mouth or a bear mouth to put more of a realistic spin on the taxidermy job. The stillborns and the, I guess, really, really small lambs when they're born, people like to uh, put them in formaldehyde pickle jars or formaldehyde filled pickle jars as specimens you know not many lambs are mummified you know not many lambs are born with no anus or no mouth or no eye sockets or whatever even like three-legged lambs hell there was a five-legged lamb five or six-legged lamb calf born last year that was a stillborn all that stuff is all taxidermy based stuff market wise where they, if you're unless you're going to throw it on the manure pile and me i'd rather get 50 bucks out of a dead lamb than having right on a dead pile or manure pile either way manure is also a good profit you can have the i should say the farmers markets around here are booming and all of them need fertilizer there are certain veggies that do better with sheep manure than, say, horse manure or cattle or pig manure. You now, there's people that swear by sheep or llama or whatever. There's more money to be made on the manure side of it. And all of it is nice income. It's little bit by little bit, but that's the way you make, it, make your money. You take the little bit and pile it to the other little bit, and you make a big bit. The, uh... What? But don't ever stop. If you're a new new shepherd or even old, old shepherd looking for more avenues of revenue, don't ever stop advertising that you have sheep. Period. Like we raise sheep, blackface predominantly. We have a few white face commercial use here. We also have a Bordeaux that's bred. Due to the kid about April, May area. Our first goat ever here on the property. Um, she'll be used the same way commercially. The goat markets here is good as the, almost as good as the sheep market, if not better sometimes. So, but that's that's the big major thing. If you're looking at equipment, stop looking at new stuff. Sheep, when you're beginning, sheep will not sustain new equipment. You have to be well over a couple hundred head to sustain new equipment. And that is a learning curve you do not want to learn right off the bat. It is easy to just go out, buy a couple hundred head, and say, well, let's learn. That's not, you can learn, but it's going to be a steep learning curve, and there's going to be some animals that die. I kid you not. Take, uh, take equipment, all right? I got... Oh, the sun's in the view. I got a Formal 706. That tractor on a bad day will be 2,500. On a good day, maybe five without a loader. That tractor will lift up any round bell, big square bell you will ever want to use for sheep. I've used it to go pull a 16 foot trailer, go buy hay, and bring it home. Everything. I'd rather use that than a pickup truck. I don't wear out the transmission on the truck. 
and that tractor will handle that no problem um, to get back to breeding stock to be more sustainable you can we have gone when we were first starting out went and bought use call somebody's call use at stockyard for that we're there for whatever reason bad moms we try to get not go with udders or tore up with mastitis because those are just jerky use you you definitely come here baby let's see if i can get her to do it try to find another you I'm trying to show you their teeth hey can i do you huh let's see huh do you? You want? Now, you could probably Google it. You want to check their teeth. If you're, I mean, most breeders are legit, but if you're at a stock area looking for breeding stock, you want to look at their teeth. The tighter they are, the younger they are. And the older they get, the more worn out their teeth are, the more they can't actually graze they actually have to just eat hay and then they still have to get supplemented with grain now some people will discount parent mouse well the golden rule with parent mouse see can i get you is that the ram and you both have to have that in their bloodlines the parent mouse gene we have a couple parent mouse but our ram does not have parrot mouth in his background. So, in theory, we'll see how it rolls. But in theory, it should be fine. Those years were discounted, being a parrot mouth. Um, if you get a U that lambs and either has mastitis and you missed it and you didn't color, whatever. You can take those babies, Craigslist them, Facebook them, whatever. You can sell bottle babies for 100 bucks a piece all day long in the spring. I got a lady that lines up and buys them, every single one of them for 100 bucks as bottle babies. I don't even got the patience or the time for bottle babies. Usually we get one, and she'll last about till June, July, for whatever reason, till I find her a home. And we'll take her to nursing homes or whatever. Nice for the old people and... Or take them to school for educational purposes. But, um, yeah, it, it's not hard. You just got to learn to build stuff on your own, adapt with the sheep. You know, if you're lambing, make your own pens. You can use 2 by 4s real easy, or, my, or uh, cattle panels. Make sure you have, if you run cattle panels, the big hoo-ha about them is where i uh, have uh bolt cutters laying around a good strong pair of bolt cutters they'll get some some of them will get their heads stuck in the cattle panels and you will have to cut them out just the panels not the actual sheep cutting but mastitis as long as we what we like to do if we're going to call them is not ship them to the stockyards yeah. that's what you call a mud you She's a Dorset, probably Hamp Cross. And that's where you get the brown and white face to them. Kind of cool, actually. But we like to take those coleus and turn them into jerky. And sheep jerky is the best I've ever had. By or none. But that's, that's about all I got. If y'all come up with any other questions or what have you. Just uh, post them on the video, and I'll try to answer them in the next video. I'll try to get a hoof trimming video in today, too. But be sure to subscribe if you like the videos. Thank you.